This is the second video in the series entitled Improv Card Magic. Now today we're going to work with six card packets. And this will give us practice looking for and recognizing these three special structure types. And then we will show you how we can preserve them and convert them from one to the other. And then in the end, finish with a very surprising reveal. So let me bring up those three structure types. The first one is a two cycle structure abbreviated 2C. The second one is a mirrored structure, abbreviated by the letter M. And the last one is an AMP. And that stands for Adjacent Mirrored Pairs. Now, as in the first part of this series, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see simplified examples of each of these three structure types. So for the video today, uh, we just need three piles of six random cards. So three piles of six. If you were here, I would have you mix the cards to your heart's content. I've mixed them quite a bit off of camera already. Okay, let's check to see if I've done that correctly. So I just need uh, three piles of six cards each. Okay, I believe that's the case. Okay. And so what we're going to do is do a little bit of practicing looking for either interesting two cycle structures, mirrored structures, or AMP structures. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the first one. Okay, here we go. Um, I, I want to remind you of something that I mentioned in the first video. Uh, the idea of randomness is probably not well understood by most people. Randomness is actually what they call clumpy. So you would think that if you have 26 red cards and 26 black cards, that it's not likely that you're going to get three red cards and in particular three hearts in a row. Most people would look at that and say that's not looking very random to me and people probably think something like an alternating packet red black or close to that is more random than the one we're looking at but that honestly is not the case because with a random ordering of a deck of cards you will get strings of red cards next to each other, or blacks, or even a number of hearts right next to each other. So this is not unusual when dealing out six random cards from a shuffle deck. The final structure type that we could work with if we wanted is an AMP. So this is where, and maybe I'll jog the cards a little bit so that we can focus on the essence of an AMP structure. This is where you take them in pairs from the top. So in particular, I guess we notice that these are of opposite color. So that's interesting. Uh, these are of the same color, right? This king and the six. And then the two and the three. Those are the same color. So if we viewed this as an AMP, we could uh, match up, we could match up the cards in such a way that there would be a red pair, a black pair, and then a pair that doesn't match in color. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Something else I just noticed regarding an AMP is the fact that these two cards here have the opposite parity, meaning this one's odd and this one's even. If you recall, a king is a 13, jack's 11, queen's 12, a king is counted as a 13. So a 13 and a 6, those are of opposites parity as well. And then these two also, a 2 is even and a 3 is odd. So that might be kind of fun to reveal. But may maybe we'll go with that one. That's kind of a fun one to go with because you've, you've matched them all perfectly according to opposite parity. Hmm, curious. Okay, so let's go ahead. So what I'm going to do is, uh, so we'll call this pile one in just a moment. And so we'll just say the um, pairs, in fact all of them, have opposite parity. 
that's just a statement regarding whether the card has an even value or an odd value. So opposite parity. Okay, so why don't we go ahead, and, we'll go ahead and de declare this to be our quote first pile. We'll put it right there. And this is what we'll reveal in the end. What we're going to do now is I'll just pick up, uh, this is the AMP packet, so just remember that this is an AMP. Like maybe I'll move this over the top just so we can see things a little bit better. Okay, so just focus on the fact that this is an AMP. And let me bring up our table of shuffles so that you can reference the table on the left as you follow this chain of arrows here, okay? Now, what I've done here, there's nothing special about the particular way in which I've gone through this table and kind of connected things together, okay? So, there are, uh, I'm not even sure, millions upon millions of ways of using the table on the left to either preserve a structure or convert it from one to another, okay? So I just happened to choose these particular paths, um, but there's nothing really special about any one of them. Okay, so we're viewing, so here we are. We're viewing this as an AMP, AMP. Okay, so the first shuffle that I recommend, and it's, a, it's one that we haven't shown you yet, it's called RLR. And that first R here stands for random. Well, it's random up to a point, okay? So, so when you do an LR shuffle, you do left, right, left, right, left, right. That's an LR shuffle with random stacking. Well, what the RLR is, is when, once you deal out one level, so we've built out one level, you don't necessarily have to put this one there. You can put it there or here. So that's the quote random part. So you have the spectators say, oh, you want it on that one? Okay, now we'll build up, finish building that level. Now where would you want this one? Over here? Okay, very good. And now if you randomly stack these, you are guaranteed to get a two cycle. It's going to be a two cycle relative to the characteristics that we focused on down here. Okay, so this is, quote, a two-cycle structure. Well, once you know it's a two-cycle, there's great things that you can do with a two-cycle. You can do a random cut. Spectator can cut this and cut off as many cards from the top and move that to the bottom. The Charlier Shuffle, I have a separate video on my channel for the Charlier Shuffle. This is a top to bottom, bottom to top, top to bottom. It's a very convincing shuffle. Um, that shuffle doesn't hurt two cycle structures either, okay? So this is still a two cycle structure. Now what you can do here to get to a mirrored structure, if you just look over here on the chart of a 50% coding, it's line five. What this will do is if you count out half the cards, one, two, three, drop the rest on top, then that will convert it to a mirrored structure. It's mirrored now. I do want to point out something called a super coat. A super coat is right below it. The only difference there is when you do like one, two, three, and normally you'd put the rest on top, you can actually put the cards that are on the table on top of the one still in your hand. So you can stack them in the opposite order. So that's called a super coat. Once it's mirrored, we have something called the stay stack principle. And that's the one mentioned in part one, where for every divisor of the packet size, you can deal the cards into that many piles and then randomly stack from left to right or right to left. And it preserves the mirrored structure, it won't hurt it, okay? So we can do like left, right, left, right, left, right, and then ask the spectator, do you want left on right or right, right on left? Okay, very good. Now, the amazing thing is you can do as many of those LR shuffles as the spectator calls for. You can do one of them or five million of them, okay? None of those will hurt the fact that it's still mirrored, okay? Now, because the number three also divides evenly into six, we can deal into three piles, like so, with random stacking from left to right or right to left. So let the spectator choose that. And you can repeat the, this LR3 as many times as you would like or the spectator asks for. Okay, and now if we come over here to the pharaoh, look up the pharaoh, it's line 12. 
This also preserves mirrored structures, the ferrule. So how the ferrule shuffle works is you have the cards and you split them exactly in half. So I'll take the bottom half here and then you just perfectly interlace them. Now depending on how you interlace them, one is technically an pharaoh in and the other one's a pharaoh out. Well, guess what? Both of those preserve mirrored structures, so it actually doesn't matter. So I'll go ahead and perfectly interlace these. Okay, there you go. So that's a feral shuffle. And so this is still mirrored relative to the special characteristics that we made note of, right, for pile one. Um, and then we're going to do something called a mange. So that's line 13. And this is a powerful shuffle as well. It will take you from an AMP to a mirrored and from a mirrored to a two cycle. Now, the Mon Shuffle comes in two varieties. One's called an over under, and the other one's the under over. Both of them work just fine. They will convert a mirrored structure to a two cycle structure. Okay, so why don't we do maybe an over under over under over so that's a, a mange over under it is now a two cycle now that it's a two cycle if you wanted to you could cut it you could do some chardelier shuffles you know this top to bottom bottom to top um, like that okay um, but let's go ahead and just finish um, this particular column here of shuffles. Okay, now we're going to finish by converting this two cycle to something that's called a DMP, distinct mirrored pairs. That's all it stands for. So let's go back, let's go to the um, full hidden structures diagram that we showed you in part one. So if you come over here, now the three structure types that we're focusing on in this particular series really are the two cycle structures over there, and then to the right we have mirrored, and then down here below we have an AMP. Well off to the right of the mirror there's something called a DMP. And so what this is, is you're just, like with an AMP, as you go down the packet in pairs, each pair is related, has some kind of special relationship. Well, a DMP is where you take those pairs, those special pairs, and then you just set them into separate piles. So you have a pair of cards here, a pair of cards here, and a pair here. The cards within each pair are related to each other in the way that you've chosen at the beginning, okay? So really, a DMP is just a way to divide an AMP into separate pairs, okay? Now, there's a number of ways of doing it depending on where you're starting from. So here we're starting at a two cycle. We have a two cycle now, okay? So you can do something called an LR inverse, okay? And so the LR inverse is, uh, as you might guess, it's a shuffle that undoes the effect of an LR shuffle. Um, but the mechanics are as follows. You have to be aware of how many cards you have. We have six. And you divide that by two. So that's three. So what we're going to do is we're going to deal out the cards into three piles. One, two, three. One, two, three. Well, if you just think about it, let's go back to our simplified diagram, and I think you'll see what's going on. So we had a two cycle just a second ago before doing what we just did. So you can think of it as like one, two, three, followed by one, two, three. Well, if you deal out the top three cards, each into its own pile, a first pile, second pile, third pile, and then you deal out the remaining cards again, first pile, second pile, third pile, you'll be grouping the ones together, the twos together, and the threes together. So it really just becomes like an AMP down here, but the cards are like divided into separate pairs on the table. So this is called a DMP. Okay. Now, um, what we know about this is what we made note of at the beginning. Remember, pile one, all of the, the pairs will consist of cards having opposite parity. Okay. So what that means then is this pair has an even and odd value card in it. So does this one. So does this one. Okay. So you could um, kind of make a game of this. Since these supposedly have opposite parity, it's kind of like having opposite charge. 
or like magnets where you have a North Pole and a South Pole. Well, the North Pole and South Pole attract each other. So you could say, well, I'm trying to get a feel for like if these are both even, both odd, that kind of thing. Whoa, whoa, they really are pulling towards each other. They, they, these must be of the opposite parity. Oh, for sure. Those are attracting each other with a very strong force. Oh, whoa, this one, <laughs> they just want to almost click together. Same thing here. Isn't that curious? What about the last one? Are they, are they repelling, which would mean they're of the same parity, or are they attracting? Ooh, this one's, boy, this one's a bit weird. I, I, I get really, I'm not sure. I, if I had to guess, I, I think they're of opposite parity. I, I, I think I'm feeling just a slight attraction between them. So I'll go with that as my final answer. I, I believe all three of these pairs consists of cards having the opposite parity. So let's just check that. Oh, check that out. That's an odd, this is even, opposite parity. Oh, even odd, opposite parity. Now this is the one I was getting kind of mixed signals on. Well, what did we find? Oh, a king. Let's see, king, uh, jack 11, queen 12. King is a 13, yes. This is a 13, which is odd. And six is even. Yes, indeed, they're of opposite parity. How in the world was I able to sense that? Okay. Well, you didn't sense anything, right? It's just mathematics that allowed you to finish with these pairings because you knew the original structure type. Namely, it was an AMP relative to these features that we just, in fact, we just stacked these right now. This is, we're, it's almost like we're back to the beginning. This is an AMP. You could go through this whole thing again, right? Um, but we knew this original structure type. We knew what these shuffles would do, either preserve a given structure or convert it. And then in the end, we knew exactly the characteristics of interest to us of those pairs of cards and we were able to reveal that indeed each pair consists of cards of the opposite parity. Okay, so anyway, that's the first demonstration. Starting with an AMP, 